I'm live. Keep these glasses on. Because the, the glare in the glasses is driving me nuts. I only filled in my eyebrows. I don't really have on makeup. But it is what it is. So if you can't tell from the thumbnail, <laughs> I'm reviewing today Toni Morrison's Home. And, you know, she never fails to live up to her greatness. So that's what's going to be discussed today. Um, yeah, these book reviews have been fun. I, uh, this is my second one this week. Can't say there'll be a third because I started reading Souls of and, hmm. I guess for that time, it was just like, you know, really hyped, like really interesting um, concepts that are being intellectually dove into for the time period of like the early 1900s. But reading it 120 years later, <laughs> not that interesting. So, I mean, some of the things, some of the themes that he discusses in the book, I'll give them, look, this isn't about souls of black folks. If I get a review, if I get to it to review it, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Today, we're talking about Miss Tony's work, Home. This book, I want to say it came out in 08. I, I don't know why I want to say 2012. It was either 2008. No, A Mercy came out in 08. So this came out in 2015. I'm sorry, I just, she's came out in 2012. So this book came out eight years ago. Miss Tony passed away last year around this time. Rest in peace to Miss Tony Morrison, the great. Um, this is a really short work. That's the first thing I noticed. 146 pages or 145 because the last page is like a poem. Um, you know, Toni Morrison, she's known for writing very lyrical, very powerful. It's just longer. It's like about 300 pages usually. This was only one, about half that. So I was really, hmm, it's about half that. So I was really intrigued as to why she made it so short. Um, Home is about a family Mostly it's just about this guy and his sister. They grew up in this town, like a little podunk town in Georgia. And, you know, they had a lot of their firsts there, but it's a town leads to nowhere. As someone who is from a town that leads to nowhere, I can understand why they did not want to ever go home. I can understand why they wanted to leave. I too am from... <laughs> From a place like that. I'm from Stafford, Virginia. Nothing about Stafford is notable. Nothing. Like, there's no famous people that come from there. Nothing. So, I too left Stafford. I too left Virginia. Uh, you know, you, you have to go out and experience the world and, and, you know, grow and learn who you are and become the person that you're supposed to become. So, the main character, um, what's his name? Frank Money, I believe. His name is Frank Money. She dedicated this book to her son, Slade. I thought that was really sweet. Yeah, they're from Lotus, Georgia. And um, Frank... Frank is, you know, your typical, I hate to say it, he's your typical Nick. You know, he, he, yeah, his name is Frank Money. His sister's name is Yasidra, Yasidra, but they call her C for short. So Frank, him to, into the Korean War, because it's like the 19, it's like the 1940s, 1950s. So they go to war. And his sister, she marries some dinky 
idiot so she can get out. She was like really young when she married him. Then she like, I think either he died or I don't think they got divorced. I think he died and they never had any kids and she's just off on her own. She's trying to figure out how to survive, how she going to get by, you know, typical mess that you go through in your late twenties, early 30 or late teens, early twenties, I should say. So, um, you know, she's trying to find her way through life. She ends up finding this job working for this doctor. I'm just like, okay. So she, you know, goes to the job. She meets with his wife, you know, the doctor's wife, you know, doctor, the doctor's wife, the wife, she asked her all these questions, you know, you know how to read, you know how to write, you know how to count money. She's like, yes, 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 yes. She's like, okay, well, this job also provides where I got a new job book because in one chapter, it made me think that Yasidra and the housekeeper were gay. And I was like, because there's like this one portion where she, at the end of a chapter where she describes some fruit and it's real freaky. <laughs> or maybe that's just my mind going somewhere it don't need to go. But she was salacious. I was like, oh, okay, are they? Um, I don't think they were. But I don't know. But that's how you know Miss Tony's a good writer. Because it's like she causes you to like puzzle things together and question things and to really make a decision for yourself as opposed to it just being spelled out for you. So anyways, she's living there with the doctor. Her brother and her are like writing each other while he's at war. He's at war and you know, you're in a fight or flight mentality when you are at war. You're constantly, your adrenaline is running. You are in survival mode. And unfortunately, Frank saw a lot of things at war that really affected him. Like all his friends died that he went to, to the army with. So he comes back and he gets into this relationship with this girl. He puts on this front as if he's something that he's not in order to get her. And then once he gets her and they moved in together, he shows his true colors as being ain't shit. <laughs> he's ain't shit. He's an ain't shit. Yeah. So, you know, he's stressing her out. She's the only one working. He's not working. You know, it's just typical struggle love. Once Frank left, I was thrilled. I'm like, get out of this woman's life. Cause she don't need this. Like we, we don't need this. So he leaves and what else happens? I don't know. He's just going through a lot of um, PTSD from, from the war, which is understandable because veterans, let's be honest, they don't really get the rehabilitation that they deserve or need. And they certainly wasn't getting it back in the 50s. So, you know, he's dealing with that. And, you know, he's dealing with a lot of traumas that he encountered at war, but also just some of the traumas that he's encountered in life as a man, as a black man growing up during this time period. And it's really affecting him and his relationships. And so him and his sister are writing each other and then he's writing his sister and then his sister like kind of stops writing and he gets a letter from somebody at her job because they're like, something's going on. I know that you're in contact with each other because she knows, she's told me about you as being her brother. Like you need to come here immediately. So he goes to the town that she's at to get her. Or I think he, yeah, he goes to the town to get her. And um, come to find out like the doctor that she, this black girl was working for, you see Drew, the black girl, the doctor, this old white man, he's been doing experimentations on her and, you know, doing stuff to her vagina and stuff because why we, the government always experiments on us. The government, we, we don't trust doctors. So he's having to deal with that whole situation. So he rescues his sister. They have to go back home because where else are they going to go? And, you know, going back home, they have to confront and deal with, a lot of things that they 
were trying to escape from, honestly. This book was really interesting. I feel like a lot of people can relate to that where they're just trying to run from their past. And it's like the past always comes up to catch, catches up with you. Like you have to face it and really just take it on face on, you know, without fear. And essentially that's what he did there. Of course, there are always some things in Toni Morrison's writing that makes you uncomfortable. And I don't know why she would always put stuff like this in her work because I'm just like, girl, we really don't need this. Like, and it's always the male characters. I don't know if it's always the male characters. I know in love, it was the male character. It was the main male character. It was like this home. It was the main male character. It was like this um tar baby the main male character nah he wasn't doing nothing tar baby wasn't salacious like this or like love haven't read paradise yet song of solomon nah it wasn't like that but this home and love jazz too i'm like dang miss tony you really got these men out here looking bad <laughs> And I'm just like, but why? I, I, I could ask her a question. I'm just like, why? Why did the story, why do your stories play out like this? Because there's always some type of either incest or there's um, statutory rape or there's um, molestation. Like it's always some despicable act that's taking place in some way, shape or form with the lead male characters. And that really is kind of bothering me. Like, I don't really like that. And I really love Miss Tony. So I'm just really like conflicted here anyway. So he like confesses about something that he did and at war with this little girl. And then he killed the little girl. And I'm like, why did this have to be? Like, he could have just been at war seeing, like, his friends die. Like, that's already traumatic enough, seeing people die, seeing dead bodies, having to, you know, reattach limbs. But the molestation, like, whatever. I'm just, look, I look at it like this. Miss Tony got it out of the way in literature, so I don't have to write about things like that. I don't want to write about things like that. Like, that shit is, it's just really triggering for me. But, you know, he had to face those traumas. She had to get healing again because of her vagina. You know, the um, doctor fucked up her organs. Excuse my French. If any kids or my mom watches this, sorry. But yeah, the doctor messed up her uterus and stuff. Now she can't even have kids. It's just really annoying. But in the end, they kind of made peace with the situation that triggered them from oh it was a really interesting book real full circle moment i really quick read miss tony is the goat one critique about her with the you know the nasty stuff with the kids why we gotta do that but anyway it, if you're on a flight and you just if you're on a Southwest flight and there's no TV, read home, read home. You will get through your flight easily. Just read home because when you fly Southwest, you, you get no television. I know that. But anyways, um, if I get through the souls of black folks, I will come back and do another book review. Um, I can't promise that I will get through it. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Um, ton of, I didn't spoil anything. You can read it. You can um, you can read it and still enjoy it. Um, I didn't really say too much. Too bad. I didn't, I didn't say too much. You'll be fine. But uh, yeah, go get it, and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.